YouTube, what's up? Actually, before I do that, I wanted to show a couple things. I found this yesterday, 20 bucks. It's a 1 to 24 scale, which I don't collect. But for 20 bucks, I thought for sure I could probably, I would think, at least double my money on it. So I'm always doing stuff like that. I think most collectors I know do that kind of thing. I'm going to throw it up on eBay and see what happens with it. Um, I went to Toys R Us today. One Toys R Us and found two cars stashed. So for all you collectors, always check the stash spots at the stores because you never know. There was nothing else there. Everything else had been picked through, but I found a hiding spot. So uh, with what I'm doing now, those I'm going to sell. I got a buddy local that wants the Impala, so we'll see if we can come to a deal. Um, if not, I'll just list it, list them on eBay. I've got a couple other greenies on the list as well. Um, trying to raise funds for more of this other stuff that I've been into lately. But uh, this video uh, is going to be stuff that probably everybody has seen. But it's going to be more of a showcase video. So here is the dealership Toyota 86 and then the Kyosho. So you can be the judge there of which one you think looks better. I'm about to get the turnstile converted to a battery. I think the Kyosho is quite a bit nicer, but this other one is still really nice. It actually, I think, holds up or stands up pretty well next to the Kyosho. I, I do think that uh, the Kyosho is a little bit nicer. And anybody that's watching that, that doesn't know, the uh, orange one is the Kyosho. The red one is the dealership car, which for all I know, the dealership car could be a Kyosho tool. You know, I, I, I would imagine that there are times where companies like Kyosho get commissioned to do stuff like this, promotional stuff like this. I don't know that to be a fact, but it happens in other walks of life, so I, I don't see why it wouldn't happen in Diecast as well. Um, another, there's a couple other side-by-sides that I wanted to do real quick. Just showcase side-by-sides. That's what I'm going to call this video is a showcase video. And, uh, so here is one of the cars I picked up yesterday. Really cool little... Konami, Datsun 510. Now that's the sedan. Technically they're both sedans. But the brownish one is Konami. The yellow one is Tomica Limited Vintage. And the Tomica Limited Vintage is definitely a nicer car. But with that said, I like the wheels nicer on the Konami. I just think they look better. And the Konami is still a really sharp looking little car. It's still really well done. But look at the back end, how, how much more streamlined the Tomica is to the Konami. The fine, the details just seem more fine tuned in the uh, in the Tomica limited vintage so another one this one I've actually been looking very much forward to showcasing side by side 
<clears throat> so those are your dots and 510 bluebirds konami all you guys uh lamley group i don't know what that guy's name is but i watch a lot of his videos and uh i dig what he what he's into if he happens to see this um you gotta check out konami but then again with your collection i'm sure you probably already have some but uh here is another one i showed yesterday this is the one of the new tomica limited vintage models that just came out i think it's even a new tool porsche 911 was re-released so the blue one is konami now granted these i think are i don't think these are the same year i know the blue one actually i can tell you the blue one is not yeah they are they're both 1982 again though you can just see the the detail is so much smoother on the tomica limited vintage now again with that said I like the wheels nicer on the Konami. The tail lights with this lighting aren't showing up as they're not showing up very good on the uh, Tomica. Let me see if I can get more light on it when it comes back around. There you go. But I do like those wheels on the Konami. Next month, Tomica is bringing out the Prelude. It's the same casting, but it's going to be uh, the SI model. So it's going to... It's going to have a spoiler, and it's going to have... I think it has the alloy wheels. So that'll be cool to uh, to check that out. So that is your Konami Tomica Limited Vintage side-by-side, -side, as well as the uh, Kyosho Toyota 86 with the dealership 86. Since the turnstile here is something new, <clears throat> I've never used it because I haven't had enough light to power it, but um, I am going to convert it to battery. I'm not, but I've got a good buddy that's going to help me out with that. And uh, so that'll be cool because then I can just turn it on, not have to worry about how much light is hitting the little panels. So these are both Konami Toyotas. And this Celica, the silver 1976 Toyota Celica GT is, it's an amazing casting. It is one of my favorites, uh, my entire premium JDM collection. It's a top five, maybe even a top three. I like it that much. Uh, the Corolla is really cool looking too, but uh, I'm just really digging this Celica. It's an amazing piece, amazing detail in that car. Those wheels are just killer. The greenhouse is killer, which is more of a Toyota thing than a Konami thing. But uh, Konami did a great job replicating it. But the interior, everything about it, the, the headlights, the taillights, the lines on the car, the sculpted detail, it is just, it's on point as the best way to, to put it with this Celica. And uh, I'm not sure, I know Tomica Limited Vintage is true to scale, 1 to 64. I'm not sure about Konami. I know they're close. So if you were to have a, a Celica GT and a Corolla Levin, these two cars side by side in real life, the proportions against each other are going to be very similar to what you see here. You can see the Celica is a longer car. But uh, very cool. I think I want to start using this more because it lets you see more of the cars and less of my hand. This one I wanted to showcase because there's a really cool feature that I noticed last night. I, I 
had this set up just to take a look and see just to see how it looked but look at the windshield as it comes around got a windshield wiper on the windshield now I remember seeing that in one of champion DJK's video uh, with those uh, I don't even know what brand they are but <clears throat> the um, Oh, what were they? Mad Max. That little two-car Mad Max set. He actually broke one of them off. And that's what this reminds me of. But this is not a separate piece. It's it, it's either molded on to the windshield or they're glued on. I can't tell for sure. But if they're either way, they're painted so they look separate. And you can see as the car goes around how three-dimensional they are and how, how much they're raised off of the windshield to make it to give it the appearance of an extra piece so this is a really unique car I don't care much for the back end of it but I really dig the front end and I think it's just a really unique piece I'm gonna try to show you the top of the car here I don't know if that's focused very good but it's a definitely an interesting casting and that is a Mazda RX 500 a rotary engine car very unique and it's made by Kyosho so the detail is another one that looked really good on the turnstile was this this is a green light Ford police interceptor I don't know if this is focusing very well but that is a very cool car and what really makes this car so awesome because I mean we've seen this casting tons and tons of times from green light but what really makes this one awesome is the livery it's just a really, really cool color combination. And I would imagine it's not an easy one to do. I mean, you're doing a lot of white, a lot of green, and a lot of black. So I don't know how they, on a mass production scale, I don't know how they do that. How they mask it off or, how I don't know, whatever they do. I also like the light bar quite a bit on this one. <clears throat> so that one is really cool. Uh, these are the only green light pieces that I've acquired in a while. <coughs> and the, <coughs> the F-350 ramp truck is another one. Looks really good. But uh, yeah, this Black Bear Jeep Wrangler looks nice too. I'm going to have to uh, tinker with this a little bit to figure out how to get it to focus the best. It doesn't really like the moving object. I can, I can see. I might just need to bite the bullet and get a new camera. This is a Konami Ken Mary Skyline. And right next to it says it spins around enough I'm going to drop a 1980 Japan skyline two of my favorite skylines I really though I like all of them the only ones I don't get excited about are the Prince skylines but everything Hako and after I am a big fan of whether it's the Hakoska, Ken Mary, Japan, getting into you know the 1981 up through 87, 88 into the uh, the R31, R32. I like them all. A lot of lineage with this car. 
lot of lineage, and I think, I think that, uh, I, this is just speculation, but from the Ken Mary era, I think there was a lot of American influence in the, the design of the car, probably not mechanically and technologically, but from a visual standpoint, um, that was the fastback era in the late 60s with the Ford Mustang and uh, Dodge tinkered with it with the, the Charger in 66 and 67 and it definitely to me I can see how the design of this Ken Mary or the Ken Mary in general could be inspired by something like a fastback Mustang. But that is just my speculation. A couple of awesome cars there, though. Uh, and I don't think really there's anything else. I'll show maybe a couple more. This seems to be everybody's favorite based on the feedback I get. This R34. I personally, I personally think I like this Hako a little bit better. But that R34 is definitely nice. These are both Tomica Limited Vintage. My R34 is going to roll off. These are just little works of art. But you know, as nice as that is there with the wood steering wheel, I mean, this is a Konami. And as you can see there, it has a wood steering wheel. So don't have to go all crazy with the TLV to get that kind of detail. Although when you do, it is the best detail. This thing looked killer too. This part of this uh, HD truck series. This comes with the F three fifty ramp truck, and I think this this is my opinion, hands down the nicest Shelby Cobra that Greenlight has put out to date. And. Obviously, the only reason for that is just because of the graphics. I, I really like the color combination and the graphics. And also, I think the wheels and tires have a lot to do with that. Very, very sharp looking car. The uh, truck itself, I don't even know if the turnstile, I think it might be too heavy. But this truck is a another die-cast masterpiece and it's awesome too because I can use this truck for my JDM stuff because most of that stuff being true to scale is smaller than you know because it's smaller than American cars it's gonna be smaller than all the green light stuff and auto world stuff so they're gonna fit on that ramp a lot better I really want to get that that Nissan auto hauler from Tomica, but the thing is, it's like $120 now. It just came out. And it got expensive fast. <clears throat> Anyways, whoa. not much else. Didn't find much today. I found the two greenies, and I'm at, at a point now where I'm not going to. You know, I, I was excited to find them, but only because, you know, I was. To me, it was like, sweet, I can sell these and buy some more Tomica and Konami and Kyosho. That is why I got excited about them. Not, not to open them and put them in my collection. 
I'm content with my green light collection. I'm not going to sell any of them, any of my green machines, at least not the, the loose ones. I'm actually in the process right now of selling all my, my carded ones. But, um, but I just don't get excited about finding green light like I used to. It's really weird what this other stuff has done to me as a collector. It has completely changed my focus and it's completely changed what I what I care about with diecast. Uh, it's it's di collecting diecast in the 2 years I've been doing it hardcore. It's it's an evolution every couple months my interest changes pretty I don't know if I'd say drastically but drastically enough to where I shift to either a different brand or a different style um, I started out with Hot Wheels and green light um, green light because I just loved the detail and their selection at that time was really good but then I acquired you know probably there's probably not many castings from green light that I don't have in one variation or another so uh, but that was what it started out as and then I just go through phases I went through a huge auto world and ultra red phase uh, I went through a Johnny lightning phase which the only reason I got out of that was because of this JDM stuff and honestly I'm not done with Johnny lightning there's especially after watching Ford's man 84's video today there are definitely more Johnny Lightning castings that I need to get. So, I'm not done with Johnny. That's probably the one brand right now that I will pick up fairly regularly outside of all the JNC. Here's one that I picked up yesterday from Johnny Lightning. And I picked this, I wouldn't have bought this if it was on eBay or or you know at a show or something like that I bought this at an antique mall because it was ten dollars and it's a white lightning if it was a regular I would have maybe paid five bucks for it five maybe six but it's a really cool little car I just I'm curious how accurate it is uh, to scale it's a really sharp little car though really clean looking Johnny Lightning does some really good stuff when they want to and you can pretty much say that about every brand Matchbox does awesome stuff when they want to green light same thing auto world they all can do really nice stuff when they want to even Hot Wheels can but they're really Tomica and Kyosho are the only two companies that do it right every single time I don't even know if I would say that about Konami but Konami was only around for like two years they didn't make a whole bunch of stuff a lot of their a lot of their stuff is really tough to find so um, I'm actually really glad that I came across the Konami stuff that I did it's not the it's not the most detailed but um, it's still very highly detailed and very unique castings. I, I think a lot of this stuff you can't get from that. I think they're they're probably the only company that does a 76 Celica GT. I don't think Kyosho has done that. I don't think Tomica has done that. I, I could be wrong, but same thing with the 1972 Corolla Levin. But anyway, so I might toy around with this little setup here for the next few videos to see how it goes, to see what you guys think. I think it gives you a much better look at the castings. And I'm less distracted because I'm not holding a, a car in front of the camera. That's my eBay. So let me know what you guys think about the setup. And uh, thanks for checking it out. As always, sorry it went 25 minutes. I definitely was thinking it'd be quicker than that. Um, but 
I just wanted to uh, throw this up there and do a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons. So leave your thoughts. Thanks for checking it out. And I will holler at the next video.